Welcome class to week three. Um, I just want to remind you now to give you a heads up that next week we get a two-in-one week. Remember I told you how we have a kind of cram course nature of this. So it's going to be ancient Israel to um, Judaism, I believe. Uh, I'm sure that's what we decide. Yeah. So um, you're going to need to put a little extra time into your work next week. So just keep that in mind. Um, and so we're doing um, Egypt now. Uh, the most, for the most part, you guys are doing your work great. I mean, you guys really caught on fast to like you know what I'm looking for. Um, but some of you for the Sunday papers, I just want to remind you, um, uh, as little outside sources I want brought up as possible. I want you to just show you're familiar with the content we brought up in this class, textbook and lectures, okay? Um, and uh, because sometimes people bring in outside sources. And I got to make sure and confirm as well, like, are those sources reliable? Um, so, I, I mean, I don't, you know, it, it's okay. Some, it's, nothing's been too uh, far off, but I just want to be careful about that, uh, okay? Um, in any case, yeah, discussions, uh, the notes, you guys seem to be really um, nailing it. Um, so I think you'll enjoy this this one we do on Egypt. I do this one a little bit different. I pride myself on this a little bit. I take us through ancient Egypt and ancient Egyptian religion up into Egyptian Christianity, which is really downplayed in the West. And a lot of people don't realize that um, Egypt was a major, major player in uh, the early centuries um, influencing Christianity. And... Um, so, you know, just for example, I'll just jump ahead to say that the idea of having monasteries and so forth came from a native Egyptian uh, Christian. So, um, in terms of even the Western world, Egypt, uh, you know, just in terms of Christianity, aside from the other uh, aspects of ancient Egypt, is a huge contribution. Um, so, um, that'll be good. And we also even go over things like the Egyptian Book of the Dead and so forth. Um, I have some video clips on the top that um, I, I probably should have just included in the lectures for you to take notes on. Um, so I'll leave it as an option for you. But I have Carl Sagan's um, discussion of the Alexandrian Library. I want you to watch. And then I just have a clip on the Coptic Church, which it's it's an advertisement basically to join the Coptic Church. But I'm really just kind of trying to show you to get familiar with the fact that the Egyptian Coptic Church that goes back to the time period I'm talking about um, still is alive and well, uh, so to speak, and um, just to kind of get you from the, just just to expose you to um, you know who the Coptic uh, worship, who wh what the Cur Coptic Church is in terms of even existing now, the Egyptian Church. Okay. Um, having said that, um, make sure that you contact me, please, if you have questions or issues or getting behind. Um, uh, some of you are being a little bit timid. Um, you know who you are. I get emails, right? I say, okay, contact me or call me, and you're, you're, you seem to be nervous about it. I try to be approachable, and I want to help fix uh, whatever needs to be fixed to help you guys thrive, okay, and help you get around my, my class and, and, and write papers that are going to give you full points. So uh, please contact me. Um, having said that, I'm going to um, let you go, but I just want to say something. I'm, I'm, I've been really talking about this a lot in my Western Civ class because it's so appropriate to the discussion. But right now there's an elephant in, in the room, which is what's going on in Europe and America. Um, uh, identity conflict is at an all-time high. I would argue that um, we're almost feeling, it's almost feeling like the 1930s in Europe. Um, without trying to shove my politics down your throat, what I just want you to understand is this. The third largest party in Greece right now is the Golden Dawn, which is a neo-fascist party. Um, Le Pen, who has a chance of winning the French elections, has tried to repackage her ideology different than her father's uh, nationalist party, but uh, she comes out of the neo-fascist tradition as well. Poland is, uh, already has a, a sort of <coughs> ultra-nationalist government. Germany is seeing the rise of the far right. Um, I think it's not fair to categorize Brexit, the, the exit of Brexit from in, in the UK as uh, necessarily totally rooted in that. But ultimately what I'm trying to say is, is that um, 
the concerns of refugees, the refugee crisis, and of uh, you know, can di people from different civilizations, world religions, world religions, such as Islam in, in the Christian world, is this possible for us to get along or not? There are many people who have decided that, that we can't. So what's taking place in the debates here? Our current president, and, and whatever you think about this, I don't. I, I want to be careful not to again shove my politics. But I want to say is that what's going on in America has a global context right now, and we're really getting to a point where there is a big, huge debate that you need to pay attention to, and, and there's going to be people who are. Th there's an existential question happening in the world right now: is can people from different cultures living in one country get along or not? And if not, then what? Right. It's serious right now. I want you to pay attention to the world. This class is so crucial for helping you as well to really decide what side of the debate, the conflict, unfortunately, that is taking place that you want to be on. And maybe a broader education on all these topics will help make a, a wiser, more sobering set of thoughts. So that's all I'll say on that. And uh, we'll be in touch.